So the all new Nissan Almera is here in Malaysia. Let's check it out. Standing proudly next to me is the all new fourth generation Nissan Almera, the N18 version. And this is the top spec VLT, which is one of three variants that you can buy. The range starts from the VL, which is priced at 80,000 ringgit. And above that, you get the VLP at 86,000 ringgit. And this bad boy in radiant red goes for 91,000 ringgit. Remember, these are SST free prices. They are locally assembled, so 100% sales tax all removed. But expect to pay about four to four and a half thousand ringgit more after December 31st, which is when the SST free window ends. That makes it about 5,000 ringgit more expensive than the Honda City. But remember, guys, this is still 10,000 ringgit cheaper than the imported Mazda 2. In fact, the style alone of this car is well worth the premium over the city, if you ask me. I mean, just look at it. Woo! Okay, so let's dive straight into the walk around review. Up front, you get this typical V motion design language thing going, and I like the way it looks. You've got this thick, v-shaped chrome grille mesh honeycomb inserts and then this blacked out v-shaped piece of plastic that connects the two headlights doesn't look quite half as bad and speaking of the headlights these are full well not full led these are by led reflector units and it's got a very striking led daytime running light design so i kind of fancy that from the front it looks very nice and sporty the turn signal is halogen bulb so it's not full led but that's okay because you still get LED fog lamps built into this very muscular angular apron down here so I, I, I'm really digging this. This glass covered badge or plastic in this instance is standard across the range and it is literally the communicative element for the forward collision warning system and autonomous emergency braking system. That's right guys AEB is standard across the board and I think that is quite a high bar to set for the entire V segment market. However, I must say that the VL and VLP don't get LED lights and there's also no LED DRLs. Instead, they both get halogen reflector headlights and fog lights. Otherwise, everything else up front is the same. You know what really makes the Almeras design work? The side profile, or one of it at least, and I am referring specifically to the rear section over here. This takes on a more traditional three-box sedan look and I like the fact that the waistline is lower and it's a much more appealing look compared to the city's oddly tall or very high boot line and waistline. This is just a nice looking overall profile, if you ask me. This is done, of course, at the expense of a lengthy rear overhang, but the design works. I kind of like it, so I am all for it. The VLP and VLT share the same 16-inch dual-tone alloy wheels wrapped with 205 55 profile continental uc6 tires whereas the vl sits on boring 15 inch silver alloys keyless entry is standard on all three variants and they all get door mounted power folding wing mirrors with integrated led turn indicators oh i also like how this black window surrounds trail towards the back it's a nice touch at the back, all three variants of the Almera get this LED combination taillights as standard and all of them feature this black housing surrounds kind of thing which looks nice, adds a nice contrast to the car. There is also a turbo badge, two reverse sensors, an integrated diffuser that is painted in the body colour, this integrated uh, carbon fibre printed plastic piece right here, as well as a black or gloss black boot or tailgate spoiler. This is only for the VLT though, but if you plan on buying the VL and the VLT, this can be had for 950 ringgit, which also comes with door visors and some carbon fiber printed door handle protectors. There are six exterior colors to choose from, this being radiant red. There's also monarch orange, brilliant white, diamond black, tungsten silver, as well as dark metal gray. I wish there was a blue though, I'm pretty sure it's going to stand out like the new selfie. Oh well, let's check out the interior. Inside, the cabin feels like it has ascended a few levels beyond the old Almera. I like the way that they made clever use of the dash space and objectively, uh, well, subjectively, I think the dash looks much more interesting than what you find in the Honda City. Now, the VLP and the VLT, they both get this two-tone black and beige 
or off-white sort of a dash theme that extends to the seats as well and uh, I think it's nice, it feels nice too, this leather trim might get dirty over time but if you're like me, you like to clean cars, that's not going to be an issue. And over here for the driver, there is also a leather wrap steering wheel. This is similar if not identical to the unit found in the Nissan Serena S Hybrid and the Nissan x facelift. And my reservations about the rim being too thin and the diameter too big still stands. It's a little bit awkward for me to drive but at least the buttons here feel well made there are no pedal shifters because it's a cvt so that doesn't make much of a difference anyway the instrument panel is nice it consists of an analog gauge on the right and a digital a seven inch color digital display on the left as far as first impressions go i think uh, the clarity is nice and i like the fact that you've got a slight degree of customizability and you can go through some of the functions in the car and i think uh, this is this is nice you know it's like it's a good thing both the vlp and the vlt get this instead of you know like in the honda city only the rs which has yet to be launched gets the part digital part analog display or gauge and the rest of the range like the city v e and the s they all get this twin analog like full analog gauges and in the middle is that digital info display so i think the almera has the upper edge here in the middle here is an 8 inch nissan connect infotainment system it's a touchscreen unit full color you can customize it a little bit and i like that it is finally very snappy and very responsive okay maybe the animation is not fluid but but it's good it's much better than the head unit found in the nissan x trail and the uh, the serena s hybrid so this is clearly a step up in a B segment car, this is a warm welcome. In fact, it even supports Apple CarPlay, but Android users don't get the benefit of Android Auto. You do, however, need to plug a cable into this USB port to get Apple CarPlay, and I think that's a small niggle. This is standard for top two models, and it is connected to six speakers, which sound pretty decent, if I can say so myself. Elsewhere, you get a single zone automatic climate control, a 3.5 millimeter auxiliary jack, a 12 volt socket, a push start button over here, traditional gear selector with a sport button switch that's nicely hidden here, two cubbies, a manual handbrake lever, and a rather plush center armrest that opens to reveal a rather tiny stowage compartment. The seats, they don't just look nice, they are actually functional also. It's got this semi bucket thing going which supports the lumbar and having sat here in a couple of hours i gotta say the seats are pretty comfortable it is designed with nissan's zero gravity seating technology in mind whatever that means it just is a comfortable seat and uh, i find that lumbar and thigh support to be pretty adequate it's just that you don't get like power adjustability so everything is manual you got height adjustability slide and inclination adjustability but the front passenger seat doesn't have height adjustment so you sit in a somewhat awkward position but that is just me being nitpicky otherwise all good here let's go to the back at the back the first thing i notice is that i'm seated higher compared to the driver and the front passenger it's like your eye level is like slightly higher that's because the bench is raised and that affects head space a little bit or headroom space so I am about 172 cm and as you can see my head is almost touching the roof so can you imagine if you're slightly taller you're not gonna have the most pleasant experience in here but as for me I think this is still okay the seats are still comfortable the leather seats are nice to the touch and uh, in terms of leg room you do get enough space uh, there's like two knuckles or two fists worth of leg room here I gotta say though, I think the previous Almera feels a little bit more spacious but in terms of width, this guy is slightly better. We tried fitting in three adults back here. Again, not the most comfortable or ideal setting but you can get by. Okay, what I don't like is that the head restraints are non-adjustable and you don't get any rear vents here so the Honda City is slightly better in that regard. But what you do get is a, well, a decent armrest. It's quite plush but a little bit high up, two cubbies. A USB charging port here and uh, that's pretty much it although I gotta point out this uh, center hump this it's slightly raised it's not too bad but I can see how it's not gonna be comfortable for some people open the boot there's a button right here under the badge it reveals oh my goodness it reveals 482 liters of space right here and the good thing is well the boot space seems rather usable the load height is low 
and it's pretty decent for a B-segment car, although it's only close to 40 liters smaller in terms of volume compared to the Honda City. Nothing to shout about, although I do have to say, there is a space saver spare tire, it looks really tiny underneath, but uh, there you have it. Also the rear seats, they fold in a 60-40 split configuration, and uh, I guess my only comment here would be the lack of felt covers for this section of the boot makes the car look a little bit more cheap and there's no black plastic cover to hide this uh, arms here. I think the Koreans do a slightly better job, but this is what it is, unfortunately. Yeah. Pop the bonnet and you're going to find a rather messy engine bay. And I got to say, this is one of the messiest ones I've seen in recent years. Huh. Anyway, underneath all these hoses and pipes and all these uh, connecting air ducts is a rather advanced piece of engineering. So you've got a 1-litre turbocharged 3-cylinder engine making 100 PS and 152 Newton meters of torque. There is also an intercooler down here which is rather small and it gets its air uh, sucked in from the front. It's got a dedicated duct and all that. And uh, power gets sent to the front wheels through a CVT, Xtronic CVT gearbox with the step logic which is supposedly there to simulate an actual gear shift in a, in a conventional automatic gearbox. Now, I have very briefly driven the car and I've got to say that um, it doesn't feel underpowered, especially when city driving and that is inclusive of a few adults on board. But we got to wait until the full review for me to give you, well, my full breakdown of the driving experience. But for now, let's talk about safety. Again, all three variants of the Almera come with autonomous emergency braking and forward collision warning system. And this goes on top of ABS with EBD, uh, brake assist, hill start assist, as well as two child seat anchors for the rear bench. Now, only the base model VL gets two airbags, whereas the VLP and the VLT get six airbags. But only the VLT comes with 360 degree surround view camera with moving object detection, blind spot indication, as well as rear cross traffic alert and passive cruise control. Now, Edaran Tanchong Moto has said that the Almeras that are sold in Malaysia, well, they have the highest specification levels in the ASEAN region. But it's unfortunate that the top VLT doesn't get the full Nissan Pro Pilot advanced driver assist systems that would be sweet. Then we get stuff like lane centering assist and adaptive cruise control. But the fact that they've given AEB a standard is okay. I think they have done something right here and it's quite a compromise anyway. So that's okay. So I think that is pretty much it for this walk around of the Nissan Almera. What do you guys think of the pricing? Would you be happy to part with your money for this over the Honda City? Or would you rather wait for the updated Vios or Yaris? Or would you not even care about buying a B-segment Sintan and just go for the Proton X50 because it's bigger, more powerful, more advanced and better looking and all that? Tell us everything in the comment section below. If you haven't subscribed, be sure to like and subscribe this video so you get more content like this in the future. And I think that is pretty much it from me. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your time. Stay safe and see you in the next video. Bye.